Welcome to Ask the Editor. I'm Peter Sokolowski, editor-at-large at, at Merriam-Webster. Nothing says dictionary quite so much as the black and white engravings and drawings used to illustrate the definitions. For some people, these images are iconic. One reason people like them so much is that they seem timeless. In fact, the style of illustrations in our dictionaries has evolved very slowly over the years. But like almost everything to do with dictionary making, the reasons are practical. The first illustrations were added to our dictionaries in 1859. At that time, they were in a special section at the front of the book. Those first illustrations were wood engravings made by transferring a line drawing onto the end grain of dense, soft wood and then cutting away with very sharp tools. This first hippopotamus seems to have been done by someone who had never actually seen one. By 1890, photographs rather than line drawings were transferred to the wood, resulting in finer shadows and more consistent and lifelike images. Beginning with the 1934 edition of the Unabridged Dictionary, pen and ink line drawings have been used for new illustrations. Illustrations have some advantages over photographs. They can show detail without distracting shadows or backgrounds. They can emphasize distinctions. Or they can clearly highlight important identifying characteristics. We choose which words to illustrate based on practical considerations. Many animals have four legs and many plants have leaves. But seeing an image of something provides an understanding of its appearance more efficiently and effectively than can be done with a brief definition. There's something comforting in the thought that a picture might be both worth a thousand words and timeless. There's even a book devoted to Merriam-Webster's historical dictionary illustrations called Pictorial Webster's. For more episodes of Ask the Editor, visit merriam-webster.com.